Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to um, resume. <laughs> he would as well, just for the drama. Okay, we now um, we are now moving on to hear our, our two advocacy groups that are um, presenting at the, on the, at this session. Um, it is Owen Murray on behalf of the National Women's Council of Ireland and Professor Mary Hickman of, for the Votes for Irish Citizens Abroad. And uh, each has 15 minutes to make their case and we look forward to listening to them. Owen, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to to you and all the Secretariat for inviting us here. This is the third time that the National Women's Council has uh, had the opportunity in my second time, so I'm appreciated to be asked back. We must have done something almost right the first two times. Last year, uh, during the, the, at the end of the presidential election, I went in to vote and I took my four-year-old son, as I have done in every election or referendum that has happened since he was born, I took him into the polling booth and at the end of voting and as we were walking out, he said, Daddy, why do we vote? And it kind of stunned me, the simplicity of the question, but if you ever want to explain something very complex uh, for people to understand it, like electoral systems, then explaining it to a four-year-old child is a good starting point. Um, I like to think, as a proud father, that he's pretty smart. He knows his way around the political system. So what I said to him was, well, first of all, we're saying, what kind of a country do we want to live in? And second of all, we're reminding the politicians that it's our country. So in four-year-old boy terms, who's the boss of who? In adult speak, what we would say is, what are the values that we share as a country and how do we want those values represented? And two, how is power distributed between politicians and citizens in our society? So I'm here today representing the National Women's Council of Ireland. We've been around since 1973 and we're the leading national women's membership organization and we represent a whole range of different kinds of women's organizations so professional groups like the irish women lawyers association the irish country women's association was a founding member group 50 50 women for election and then women's centers in places like longford waterford monaghan donegal all across the country we have 165 different members and what are the values that we and our membership believe should be reflected in Irish society? Well, first of all, we want equality between women and between men. And we know that in Ireland, in the last few years, despite the recession, that the income of the wealthiest people has gone up and the income of the poorest people, often women, has gone down. And we know that in Ireland, the gap between the pay of women and men is 16%. Second of all, we believe in the value of solidarity. That means including those people who are marginalized, who are underrepresented, who don't always have a voice in our society. So for example, we've never had a traveler woman in the doll. We've never had a Muslim woman in the doll. So how truly representative is our national parliament? Third of all, we want to build a caring society. And not just a caring society, but a caring society where men take on as much responsibility for caring for family, for friends, for relatives, as women do. Because we know that women in Ireland do the overwhelming majority of care work, both at home and outside the home. And third of all, we want to have a system that is environmentally sustainable so that future generations of children live in a safe and a green country. Now the second question is, how should power be distributed in Ireland? Well, the first thing we would like to see is more power for women, be they citizens or as politicians. And since I last spoke to you on the issue of women in politics, I can report one tiny piece of good news, which is that in the Meath East by-election, a woman TD, I think she's the youngest TD now, a uh, member of the Dáil, was elected. And that changed Ireland's position in the international league tables for representation of women in politics. And now we can be proud to say that we've moved from number 96 to number 89. And we're tied with North Korea, of all countries, in our representation of women in politics. So we can see that Ireland today is still a society developed by men for men. And the second thing we would like to see 
is more power for citizens and less power for politicians. So I suppose you might be asking, how does all of this relate to electoral systems? And before I answer that question, I'd just like to talk a little bit about electoral systems and values and how do they work and how do they correlate and why is, does equality matter? If you, for those of you who have copies of our submission in front of you, if you looked at pa page nine, you'll see, see a table. And what the table essentially illustrates is that the more equal a society is, the better that society is. The less equal a society is, the more problems that society has. For example, in more equal countries, we tend to have less violence and more trust. In more equal countries, we have less problems with mental illness and higher educational performance by children. In more equal countries, we have less problems with alcohol and drug addiction, and then lower levels of obesity. So really, how does any of this relate to electoral systems? Well, there's a lot of academic research, I don't know if you heard about it yesterday, that indicates that the electoral system that you have in your country correlates to the kind of society you have. And we believe that the electoral system is really just a tool, and it's a tool to allow you, as citizens, to embody the highest aspirations of what kind of a country you would like. So if you would like a country that is more efficient, that the decisions made are stronger and tougher, then pick a winner-takes-all, first-past-the-post electoral system. But if you would like a different kind of uh, country, where you have fair representation for all views and for all values, then you must be leaning towards a more proportionate system. Because what do proportionate systems do? Well, they allow for broader participation. They allow for minority groups to be represented and to have their voices heard. They tend to be, in fact, overwhelmingly, you can say that they get more women representatives into parliament. They tend towards consensus rather than conflict and adversarial politics. They tend to build long-term stability into the kind of policies that are pursued rather than swings from one side to the other. And they tend to, and I found this very interesting when I saw the research, they tend to build a more gentle kind of politics, and I think that would be a very healthy thing. So the National Women's Council, we held two consultations about this, because it is a tricky issue, it's a complex issue, and we wanted to ask our members, well, what do you think about the electoral system, and what kind of changes would you like to make? So we had one in Cork in September 2012, and we had another meeting just last week with the group called Claiming Our Future in Dublin. And of course, they voted for two different systems, so I don't have a clear sense of which system is better than the other based on our members' views, but I can give you a sense of why they picked those two different systems. First of all, they said in Cork that they would like the mixed member system, and I'll talk a bit about that in a moment. And second of all, in Dublin, they said they would like an improved version of the proportionate representation system. Some of the things that they said, again, you'll find this in our submission, they said PRSTV is not women-friendly because of the long hours that it makes politicians do and the strong links to constituency workload. And in fact, we know that women politicians end up doing more constituency work than male politicians because a lot of the time people from other parts of the country will travel to find a woman politician because they're looking for, for, for one. Second of all, they said that they wanted to keep a really close link between citizens and politicians because they believe that that is a key accountability mechanism. They want more power for local government and not for all of the power to be vested in the dole. And I know that's not necessarily on the agenda here today, but I think it's important to note. Also, they wanted more invested in political education in schools so that people really understood what they were doing when they were making decisions around elections. They wanted less clientelism, less uh, uh, focus on small issues and our politicians not looking at national big picture issues. And ultimately, of course, they wanted more women involved in the political system. So how do we do all of this? It seems like quite a diverse set of demands and, and views. Well, what the members of the National Women's Council said was that they would like an improved version, option one, an improved version of the proportional representation system. And the two things that they would really like to see within that are one, larger constituencies. So why do they want larger constituencies? Well, all the evidence shows, particularly in Ireland, in the way that our PRST 
TV system is established is that the bigger the constituency, the more women you tend to get elected. And the simple reason for that is because the women in parties tend to be the second or the third candidate. So they get brought in in bigger constituencies in a way that they don't in smaller constituencies. And the second thing that they wanted was direct democracy. So that is the idea that citizens can initiate a referendum on a piece of legislation either that the government is proposing or perhaps that they would like to see themselves and that they have a power to hold the government to account. And the last time I was in, I spoke a bit about direct democracy and it's worth maybe reminding you that Ireland had a direct democracy system when the free state was established. It's not something completely new. In fact, it's something old that got taken out in 1937. And one of the consequences of taking it out was that the cabinet got far more power than it needed to have. So if you want to have a system where you can try and hold the cabinet to account, then a direct democracy system is a really useful thing to have. The other system that our members liked was the mixed system, where you had a nationalist system and then also a constituency-based system. Now, the example that got everyone particularly excited was the example of New Zealand. Um, and the reason it got everyone excited is because when New Zealand moved from the first-past-the-post system to a mixed system, it dramatically increased, I think doubled in the space of one election, uh, the percentage of women uh, represented in, in their parliament. So I think from 16 to 30 percent. And this is in a country, New Zealand, where they were the first country in the world to give women the vote. Um, so, so, and that has held consistent since. Women's representation in the New Zealand parliament has been very positive. But I suppose what concerned our members was that idea that in New Zealand they have a system where you have a nationalist system on one hand and then single seat constituencies on the other hand. And so that doesn't balance the idea of having larger constituencies. So what we would like, if you do decide to go for a changed electoral system, and I see on your ballot paper you may not do that, but I think it's worth discussing it. If you do go for that, we would like a nationalist system, but also a system that has big constituencies with the PRS TV uh, the single transferable voting system. So I'll summarize and just say there's a couple of principles that we would really like to, you to keep close to your heart when you're deliberating over how to vote. And in a sense, I feel I'm preaching to the converted because the convention has already made pretty excellent recommendations about increasing the representation of women in politics. But we would really like to make sure we have a system at the end of this process that maximizes the representation of women and also of minority groups whose voices are not heard. To ensure that gender quotas are compatible in whatever system you pick. Um, to have fewer constituencies with more TDs in each constituency. And as I said, if you are changing the system to pick a mixed system rather than a first-past-the-post system, but a mixed system that also has large constituencies so we can maximize the numbers of women represented. Thank you all very much. Thank you.